Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at inheritance. And what inheritance is, is not something that you get from your parents, though that might also be something that's the case. It happens to be something that exists within computer science, and basically what it is, is it's the idea that I can have some class, and I can have some set of other classes. And the important thing here is, is that this class up here, and we'll just call it P for parent class, and P1 for now. And down here, we'll just call these C for child classes, C1 through C3. And what the important thing is that each one of these child classes can have the ability to gain the functionality of their parent class. And even more so, these children classes can then have children of their own, in which then these children down here, which are grandchildren of P1, so we'll just call them G1 and G2 for now. These get the functionality of both their parent as well as also their grandparent. So if I have some function or method such as foo defined up in here, then C1, C2, C3, as well as G1 and G2 can all use foo as can P1. So any instances of any of those classes can use that with inheritance. Then if I have, say, in C2, bar defined in here, then C2 has access to bar, but P1 doesn't, because parents don't have access to the same functionality of their children. Then also C3 and C1 do not have access to bar, because siblings don't have access to their siblings' functionality, provided that isn't defined in their parent. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to have this common set of functionality stored up here that isn't something that you then have to instantiate or create every time you create one of these classes in here. One of the most common places we'll see this is that in a, a long time in the future when we get to what's known as WPF, or Windows Presentation Foundation, which happens to be basically how the, all this UI you see here for paint, all these buttons in here, all this different text, all these different little drop downs and menus in here. And while this is using what's known as a ribbon menu, which is a specific type of menu in which you have these different tabs up here, but these different tabs, the canvas in which those tabs are then on, this drop down menu, each of these options within there, all these buttons in here, the drop down for this then, which then has other buttons in it, all that's done using WPF. And it happens to be one of the primary ways in which Windows UIs happen to be done. There's a couple of others, and we'll get into what a couple of them are, but the primary one we'll be focusing on, at least at the time of this recording, is WPF. In the event that Windows releases a newer and more advanced form of UI generation than WPF, we will absolutely be moving on to that one at that time. But for now, WPF is near the highest end, if not the sort of recommended way of doing UI by Windows. So what you're looking at then in this case here for the sort of things is this. Something such as this button here and this button here, they can be the exact same class. And we'll just for now reference them as this one here. And let's just say that that happens to be our brushes class. And I'll just use BR for it for short for now. Or not really brushes, sorry, button class. So I'll just spell that one out because if I shorten it, then you can make some very immature jokes about it. But that happens to be our button class for now. And the important thing to note is that it probably ends up deriving off of one of the same classes that these tabs end up deriving off of, that things such as the thing that's containing both of these tabs happens to be derived off of, the same thing that probably these drop-down menus are derived off of, so that they can end up being displayed correctly. And in general, the way in which Windows does this is that the default level is actually this window itself. And basically an empty window is the most basic fundamental level of a graphic thing. So that would be up here. And we'll just sort of say that this one here would be our window. And then there are multiple layers in here of different classes that basically control how things can be positioned and put on a window itself. So buttons only have certain ways in which you can put them inside of a window. Same thing for if you consider this whole canvas down here that we're using to draw on. Canvases are actually a somewhat higher level 
class that's probably closer to this level than it is to this level. And there are a few between each of these, however, the major thing is, is that different levels have different effects in terms of how the user can interact with them, how they get shown on the screen, and things like whether or not they can have scroll bars. Scroll bars themselves are customizable UI pieces because they have a couple of buttons, this up button, this down button, as well as then also you can click on this little bar here. You can drag this, which is known as a thumb. And we'll get into what all that is in the future, but it's important to understand that each of these more or less ends up having certain common functionality to it in terms of how it's displayed by the operating system and by the underlying logic that takes place on your computer. And it's a matter of, we could take a look at it, so is it, okay, here happens to be some canvas, and we'll just call it can for now, for short, and those happen to be different things that exist within here, and that's the major important thing is that Buttons are going to have their own unique functionality because when you click on a button or when you hover over a button, you're going to want some different functionality than necessarily you want at different layers. And a lot of this is just stuff to make it simpler for you because you can actually do everything that Bun does using just a default window class. But it's a matter of a lot of that stuff you would end up having to define every time you want to create one of those buttons or one of your own custom ones. So you do a ton of work in here, so it just is easier to have a class that's derived off of window, so that it has that same functionality, but that has the stuff that you're looking for. So that's why, in general, you're going to see these I'm split out. Now, let's go with a couple of practical, more practical examples than just this. Let's consider then, and for now I can just delete the names along here, but let's consider then transit, so different vehicles. So up here, we're just going to have this be V for vehicles. Then down here, we can have things such as this one here might be a P for plane. Over here, we might have type of car. Over here might be a bicycle. And all of these are going to have certain common features in terms of they have a certain speed to them. They have a certain mass. You might want to track their cost. And these are all common things that you might want to have a parent for. There's all, they're also going to have certain common functionalities in terms of how they end up moving, in terms of different functions that you might want them to share between each other. So that's one of the good ideas of having something that's sort of this vehicle class up here with then different subclasses or children that specify the different types of these within here. So then within bikes, you might have things such as over here, I could have like a road bike and over here and I'll just go with RO and for this one here we could have a recumbent bike so RE in which they both are bicycles they both have two wheels they both happen to have certain similar things in terms of how you actually move them such as pedals and chains whereas in cars you're going to have an engine you're going to have your drive shaft which then is connected to an axle which is going to spin your wheels and it's going to be similar but different than a bike because it's going to Primarily the difference in terms of how large it is, its means of locomotion in terms of having an engine as opposed to a person. Though you can have a powered bicycle or a motored bicycle. And then for things such as, in case you even want to get more distinct about this, something such as a car engine and a plane engine, at least, well, even jet engines have some of the same functionality and same basics as a propeller engine or a car engine. But you might also then want to have some form of like engine class over here in which then that's going to have a few different versions coming off of it in which you can go, okay, I've got my car engine over here. I've got plane engine over here. I might then also have jet engine over here. And by plane engine, I just mean propeller engine for now. So jet planes would use jet engine over here. So there's that. We'd have our prop engine in here, or propeller engine, and over here we'd have our car engine. So it's a matter of, that would be something you might have just an engine for now listed in here. Because, you know, you might be Jay Leno and decide to strap a jet engine onto a motorcycle. So that happens to be the sort of thing that you will actually want, so that you can basically go, I can substitute then, and there's one of the other powers of inheritance 
And this is, has to deal with what's known as polymorphism. And we'll get into what that all means in the future, really. Because I know this is a really large set of topics to be discussing. We'll be going into the details of it a whole bunch in the future. So if you can't fully keep up right now, that isn't as important as getting a general idea and getting comfortable with the idea that one class can share its functionality with another one. So one of the things I could do in here is I could have just an engine and some engine and we'll just call it E in here. And I could either have, because of the fact that this is derived from engine, I could have a car engine in there. Alternatively, I could have, if I really want to, a propeller engine or a jet engine in there. Or if I really want to be silly about it, or actually more realistic about it, I could also have this split up into, off of here, basically one for gas and one for electric. So is that I can end up saying either I can have an electric engine in here or a gas engine, or I could have some hybrid engine also. And one thing you'll note is that for a lot of this, I'm going from one parent to many children. And most languages are, well, I'm not going to say most because there are a lot of languages out there. Most languages I have experience with limit it so as that you can only have a single parent or in general, a single parent per child. So the problem then is, is that you might say, okay, well, I could have a hybrid down here that uses both electric and gas. And C++ is one of the very few languages I personally have encountered that allows you to actually do have multiple parents in that manner. And as such, it's a matter of realistically what would need to happen for this is that you'd either have to go with just hybrid directly off of car, you might put it off of either hybrid off of electric or hybrid off of gas in most other languages. So C sharp and Java in particular. And that's because things can get a bit weird when you have multiple inheritance like this. In terms of if both of these happen to, let's say that within engine, I have some things such as, we'll just call this, I don't know, POW for how much horsepower it can generate and it's some function let's say then electric and gas i end up creating or more accurately i end up overriding the functionality of pow so is it within each of these i have my own version of pow in here and there's one of the important things that you can do with it is that though you can get the functionality out of something such as engine with pow you can then choose in a child class to replace it or not so if I wanted to in here, I could have this one here in which it replaces POW with some other function. But for electric, let's say that for whatever reason, I don't replace POW. And then I have hybrid derived from both of these. So then it's a matter of which version of POW do I use? Do I use this version or this version if somebody ends up calling it? Because of how it ends up being is, is that similar to over here in which I have foo, I could do C1, so something that's a C1, and we'll just call this one C1C, so that we have normal nomenclature for it, and then a little semicolon here, and then we could do C dot foo, even though it happens to be not in the same class as P1 is. And this is allowing us to use that functionality that's common between all of these children that's derived from the parent. So in this case here, where I have something H and I need to figure out which version of this POW function to use, it's a matter of, it gets complicated for how exactly it ends up doing that. And when we get into multiple inheritance, we'll cover exactly how C++ handles it. However, most languages in general, or once again, most languages that I have encountered, are going to tell you, you have to get rid of one of these two in order to actually be able to do this inheritance. So is that it doesn't have to deal with that at the compiler. It can just go, okay, I'm going to do this. And now you might be wondering, okay, well, what if in here I override foo, but I then want to access foo? Well, that ends up getting a lot more complicated and realistically, well, we'll get into that in the future for how exactly you would end up going around and doing some stuff in order to really 
twist inheritance, but those are all more complicated things. For now, it's important to think about the different ways in which you might want to share functionality. So consider things that are common, things such as UIs on different screens like in here, like in this, in which each of these buttons, even though they have different icons, some of them have drop-down lists, some of them don't, the fact of the matter is that whether or not it has a drop-down list, most of it has the exact same functionality. Or, for that matter, this here. Or, in case you want to go with another thing, consider Minecraft. Consider how in Minecraft there are a whole bunch of different types of blocks in which they have different shapes. You have your little L-shaped stair blocks, you have your slabs, you have your full-size blocks. You have some of them that happen to be, such as soul sand, slightly shorter than your full-size blocks, but aren't either of these. So it's a matter of, you might consider each of those shapes to be a particular class, with then either, and there are many different ways in which they could do it, and they don't necessarily have to use inheritance to do that, but it's one thing to consider that they might do. Or alternatively, whether something is a transparent block or not. They could just do it by a having a boolean for something being transparent, such as in case I have a block of stone over here or a block of cobblestone, then over here I have a block of water and just add a bit of waves there. One of these is going to effectively be transparent so that your player can wind up sitting in it. And the other one, your character has to be standing on it because of the fact that it isn't transparent and in case you've ever glitched so as that you're inside of a wall and start suffocating or have sand fall on your head, then it's a matter of you understand why certain ones are transparent to certain ones aren't in terms of how they actually are affected by the game, and then for things such as which ones are affected by gravity like sand is, and which ones like cobblestone or the like aren't affected by gravity. So those all happen to be things that are worth generally just thinking about, and that's really what I'd like you to do between this episode and our next episode. We aren't necessarily going to immediately continue on with this discussion, but this is going to be a large point of what we're going to be covering over the next, I don't know, really rest of this series. I mean, some of the stuff in terms of that we'll be dealing with won't directly deal with inheritance, but inheritance is going to be so common that it's important to begin thinking about it now. And with that, I'm going to thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.